Russia's most recent launch to the International Space Station was supposed to be nothing more than a familiar routine. For decades, the Soyuz has been the backbone of Russia's human spaceflight program. It has flown through political turmoil, budget cuts, and global competition. It has a reputation for reliability that even NASA respected for years. So much so that the United States depended entirely on Soyuz flights from 2011 to 2020, after the space shuttle retired. So when the latest mission lifted off in the early hours of the morning, there was no reason to expect anything unusual. Two Russian cosmonauts and one American astronaut climbed into their seats, and the Soyuz rose from the pad just as it has hundreds of times before. But just seconds after liftoff, something had gone terribly wrong with the launch pad itself. Pad 31, one of Russia's main launch sites for crewed missions, had taken a hit so severe that early images looked like the aftermath of an explosion. The support tower collapsed. Metal beams were twisted and scattered around the area. The concrete surfaces were cracked, torn, or simply missing. And the most shocking part was what happened underneath the rocket. The section below the pad where technicians normally stand while working on the vehicle was almost completely destroyed. Before launch, it had looked like a clean, well-organized workspace. After launch, it looked like the floor had been blown out from underneath. The maintenance cabin was ripped apart and thrown into a nearby trench, leaving behind only broken pieces of metal and shattered panels. What made the incident even more surprising was that the rocket itself behaved exactly as expected. Soyuz engines always ignite while the rocket is still held firmly in place. This is a normal part of the design. For several seconds, the engines blast at full power while the vehicle remains stationary. Only after those seconds pass does the rocket release and rise. It's a method that has worked reliably since the 1960s. The Soyuz uses four strap-on boosters, each powered by an RD-107A engine. Together, these engines produce around 750,000 pounds of thrust. By modern standards, that's not an extreme level. SpaceX's Falcon 9, for example, produces nearly twice that at liftoff, and Starship's booster generates more than 16 million pounds of thrust. But Falcon 9 and Starship both sit on pads specifically designed to handle that energy. Russia's older pads were built in a different era and use a different philosophy. Instead of channeling exhaust outward through wide trenches, much of the force gets pushed downward into tighter underground spaces. Over time, those cavities and support structures weaken, especially after decades of exposure to heat, vibration, and intense pressure. If even one key section is compromised, the entire foundation can fail in an instant. That appears to be what happened here. The exhaust was funneled directly into the maintenance area with almost no room to disperse. The heat and pressure built up faster than the structure could handle, and the result was catastrophic. Another weak point was the design of the Russian support tower. Instead of standing offset like the ones used for Falcon 9, Atlas V, or Artemis, Russia relies on a wraparound structure with four arms that hug the rocket. These arms flip open when the engines reach full thrust, but because they sit so close to the vehicle, they are exposed to the full shockwave of ignition. This created a new problem far bigger than repairing a damaged tower. Pad 31 is Russia's only fully operational crew launch pad for the Soyuz. Without it, Russia temporarily loses independent access to the ISS. They still have other launch pads for satellites and cargo missions, but none that can immediately support crewed flights. This becomes a serious issue when you consider how the ISS relies on regular crew rotations. Astronauts train for specific mission lengths, usually six months. Their schedules are tightly planned to match arriving and departing missions. If Russia can't launch the next rotation on time, the astronauts currently on the station may have to stay longer than planned. Long-duration spaceflight is not impossible. People have spent over a year on the ISS before, but it's physically and mentally draining. Microgravity weakens bones and muscles. The constant isolation and confinement take a psychological toll. Crew schedules, medical plans, and research timelines all get disrupted. 
The first time Russia has found itself in a situation like this. Back in 2022, Russia experienced a major problem with the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft docked to the ISS. A micrometeoroid struck the external radiator, causing coolant to leak out into space. The spacecraft suddenly became unsafe for bringing astronauts home. Two Russian cosmonauts and one American astronaut were stuck on the station with no return vehicle. Russia had to scramble to prepare a replacement Soyuz and launch it without a crew, essentially using it as a rescue capsule. During that time, NASA openly stated that if the replacement Soyuz couldn't be launched in time, SpaceX's Crew Dragon could step in as a backup evacuation vehicle. That moment made it very clear that Dragon had become the only practical safety net for the entire ISS program. Meanwhile, SpaceX is in full preparation mode for the upcoming Starship Flight 12. This launch is supposed to be the next major step in the Starship program, but getting there has been chaotic so far. SpaceX is working on the next-generation vehicles, the V3 line, which are heavier, more powerful. But new hardware means new risks, and Starbase has been dealing with the consequences. On the booster side, the upgrade is huge. The new Super Heavy boosters, starting with Booster 18 and now Booster 19, are designed to hold 35 Raptor engines, each producing around 230 tons of thrust, giving the full booster a total of 8,000 tons of thrust at liftoff. That's already more than the 33-engine configuration used on earlier flights. One of the biggest setbacks happened when Booster 18 exploded during a pressure test. It wasn't even a full static fire, just a gas system check meant to verify the tanks were sealed properly. Instead, a massive rupture tore through the booster, blasting open the upper section and sending debris across the pad. No one was hurt, but the booster was lost instantly. It was supposed to be the first of the upgraded V3 engines and structures, so losing it put more weight on the next prototype in line. With Booster 18 gone, all eyes shifted to Booster 19. This new unit is being stacked ring by ring inside the mega bay. The tank sections are thicker than the previous generation. Roughly 4 mm stainless steel on earlier versions now increased closer to 5 mm in high stress sections. The internal plumbing has been redesigned to better handle the massive flow needed for 35 Raptors firing simultaneously. Once Booster 19 is fully stacked, it will undergo cryogenic testing using liquid nitrogen to prove the tanks can handle pressures close to 8 bar, which is the operational range needed for full-power flight. On the ship side, SpaceX is undergoing a similar upgrade. The new Starship upper stage will likely fly with nine Raptor engines. Three sea-level Raptors generating around 230 tons of thrust each, and six vacuum raptors producing roughly 280 to 300 tons each. That's nearly 2,400 tons of total vacuum thrust, more than double the capability of earlier configurations. The goal is to increase payload to orbit far beyond previous limits. The V-3 ships are expected to carry over 150 to 200 tons to low Earth orbit in fully expendable mode, and possibly more than 100 tons when reused. The heat shield tiles, which are one of the biggest headaches for SpaceX, are also being redesigned. Earlier tiles often cracked or detached during testing. But the new tiles have deeper anchor pins, and a slightly different shape meant to reduce vibration-induced failures. Each starship needs about 18,000 tiles, and even losing a handful during re-entry could compromise the flight. Now the launch pad situation is its own story. After Flight 9 and Flight 10, SpaceX realized the old orbital launch mount wasn't strong enough for repeated high-thrust launches. They demolished large sections of the original pad, removing the older steel legs, tearing out damaged concrete, and scrapping old plumbing systems. In place of that, they are building a deeper flame trench and installing a new reinforced steel plate similar to the one used after the first Starship explosion in 2023. This plate is cooled by hundreds of water jets pushing out water at extremely high pressure to absorb engine heat and prevent concrete from exploding into debris. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.